Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John, this is Menu Trunet, and welcome to the 40,000 subscriber special video, which we are going to be celebrating today with Fading Hearts. A. I think it's a dating simulator. I think. I'm not entirely sure. I picked this one specifically because I, I love just kind of digging through Steam and finding the most kind of random weird stuff I can find. And this one, like, this one was so weird I couldn't even figure out what it actually was. Like, I get the feeling there is dating in here, but it also, like, promised that all the characters are going to lie and the genre of the game just changes at random. And I have no even idea what it is. But I'm told it's actually quite short, so I might even be able to kind of do the whole thing uh, in one sitting. Which is fine. I don't mind games I can kind of uh, go through in one sitting. So yes, Fading Hearts. Let's see what the hell going on in this madhouse. How did it come to this? Through the rain pouring down from the sky, I can see all their gazes fixed firmly on me. My back is up against the cliff. I don't know exactly how far the drop is, but it's most certainly a fatal one. I had the world. I had everything. Parties in my honour, tribute from all over the world, servants at my beck and call, even adoration and fame. But I threw it away. And for what? Freedom. It's the one thing that I could never have. A detachment of mage no <laughs> I'm sorry. Just the, the dramatic serious opening and music and it being about the human condition. Then suddenly there's a detachment of mage knight. I didn't even know there was magic. Excellent. There's a detachment of mage knights who once served me and they now block my path. Each of them holds a staff pointed directly at me, poised to act in a split second's notice. All I have is a simple sword, a gift from my father that I've carried with me all these years. Even now, it's still too large for me to wield properly. But even if I could, I'd be no match for the elite soldiers I'm facing. I can see the fear and pain in their eyes. Some of them are crying, but all of their hearts weigh heavily in their chests. They're torn between loyalty to their country and the one they once served. Me. I tighten my grip on the hilt of my sword and shout out to them. I refuse to be a pawn anymore. I refuse to be known only for the blood that flows through me. The pounding rain is battering away at my strength, but I continue to clutch my sword. You heard my words, but you never understood them. You saw me, but not for who I was. And now, I grasp my sword with both hands and pull it free, holding it aloft with all the strength my small hands can muster. If you cannot know me by my words, then you will know me by my deeds. Brilliant! <laughs> no idea what's happening. <laughs> oh, I... A dream, perhaps? Good morning, Trident City. How are you this lovely Friday morning? You too expect sunny size the weekend, but don't stay out too late Sunday night. The thunderstorm is moving in. Ah, uh, morning already, but the bed is so warm and cozy. Yep, okay, I was having a dream. I shut my eyes for a few more precious moments of rest, wondering if I can get away with pretending to oversleep. Okay, probably not. Fine, school it is. At least it's Friday, finally. The market opened today with tech stocks rising yet again. Analysts now say this could spell trouble if the trend continues as the eventual correction will. My name is Wright. I'm 17 years old and I attend Crystal Stream Collegiate Institute. It sounds exciting, but the only thing impressive about the school is its name. Many economists have said that the dramatic boom in sorry, sorry Yama's tech industry, the result of the Y2K disaster six years ago, has been healthy for the economy. Now, however, honestly, I don't even know why I bother to attend school. Every class there feels as boring and meaningless as the one before it. Sometimes I marvel at how I ever found the motivation to get out of bed for school all these years. But I guess sentiments like that are nothing typical for a teenager living in Northwest Trident City. Nothing ever seems to change from one ho-hum day to the next. Ah, shoot, the time. Unique insight, Elizabeth, what is your take on click? If I don't hurry, I'll be late. Not that I really care, but... Hmm. Did you already leave without me? Is that my house? You're late again, Ryu. Oh, hello. Hello, Claire. Honestly, do you derive some sort of twist of pleasure from keeping a busy girl waiting? Good morning, Claire. Do you have a lot planned for today? I grinned disarmingly at her. Not like as much chance of working, though. This has been our morning ritual for years, and I'm pretty sure she's immune to whatever scant charm I possess by now. Honestly, Ryu, do you think I'd overlook your lack of punctuality that easily? Yep, definitely immune. 
Every day is a busy day for me, you know that. Claire is a model student, always at the top of the honour roll with plenty of extracurricular activities on the side. We've been friends since childhood, and yes, she was like this when we first met too. Naturally, she taunts me all the time for being such a slacker. She seems to delight in pointing out all my shortcomings. Is Rena here yet? No, it looks like she's running late as well. Despite all the grief she gives me, I like Claire a lot. She's smart, motivated, and everything I'm not. I wish I could ask her out, but there are a few problems with that. The first one is that she happens to be dating someone else right now. As for the other one, heh, you and Rena would make such a perfect couple. After all, you're always both running late. It's that. Claire is constantly trying to set me up with Rena instead. Man, this is so ridiculous. I wish you would let it go. It's not like that, Claire. Oh, really? Then why are you getting so worked up about it? I'm not. Doesn't look like that from here. Come on, did you think Rena's cute? Well, of course she's cute. See, you do like her. That's not it, and you know it. Really now? Then what is it, Ryu? We've been friends for ages now. You can tell me. I can't say. I can't tell her I like her, especially not like this. Well, I'm sorry, but that's hardly a compelling argument. So tell me, if you insist you don't like her, what do you think of Rena then? Fine, I can say that much to her. Well, there are a lot of cute girls out there, but Rena is beautiful both inside and out. Oh, well, all right, just let, it, just let her set you up with Rena then. Sounds like Rena's quite a catch. Excellent. Sure, she's a little clumsy sometimes. She isn't always sure what she wants for herself, but not much can stop her once she puts her mind to something. She has the ability to accomplish anything she wants. Her only problem is deciding what that should be. What do you think? You know what, Ryu? You're more intuitive than I thought. Too bad that doesn't seem to completely help your sense of awareness, but I do think Rena will be happy you said that. Right, Rena? Hawa! And there's Rena. Ryu, I never knew you thought of me like that. I, I don't know what to say. Oh man, now I've done it. Listen, Rena, you, you, you weren't supposed to hear that. I could stare at you guys blushing all day long, but I've got classes to attend. See you later. You, Claire, get back here. Claire takes off running and I sprint after her. Uh, right, you, Claire, wait, wait for me. I chase Claire all the way to school with Rena struggling to keep up. Man, this day is already a pain and school hasn't even started yet. The scary part is, it's not really all that unusual. I sit down at my desk just as teacher walks in. It looks like I barely made it on time today. Alright everyone, open your books to page 342. We'll be picking up where we left off about Soriyama's role during World War II. During the Battle of... I don't mind history that much, but we're going a bit slow for my taste. World War II is complex to be sure, but the teacher still isn't covering the material very quickly. Whether or not the lessons are slow, I still have to sit through the same amount of class time to reach that blessed respite called lunchtime. Lunchtime, time passes so much faster when you're spacing out. Most of my classmates are heading to the cafeteria, but I'm lazy, so I always eat lunch in the classroom. I usually try to eat quickly so I can spend the rest of the break relaxing or hanging out with Rena and Claire. Uh, hi, Ryu. Hi, Rena. How was your morning? It was okay. Uh, same as usual, really. Rena is a really sweet, earnest girl with a kind heart. When it comes to knowledge, she can't be beat. But... Ryu, I forgot my lunch again today. I don't suppose, I mean, would you mind if, for all that bookishness, she is incredibly absent-minded. Alright, Rena, I will give you my third sandwich. I take out a stra strawberry sandwich, worth him having a sandwich, and place it in Rena's eager hands. I was really looking forward to eating it too. Thank you so much, Ryu. Rena happily munches on my precious sandwich, a sunny smile plastered across her face. But suddenly... It vanishes. Uh, I'm really sorry I keep taking your lunch just like this. I promise I'll pay you back someday. Rena tends to feel guilty for things that aren't her fault, even if they're obviously not within her control. Although I suppose apologising for devouring my lunch so often is pretty normal. Why did she suddenly feel so bad about it though? I've been sharing my lunches with her for a while now. If I minded, I would have said something. Maybe I should start making lunches for you too. 
No, 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 uh, I couldn't let you do that. Uh, I mean, shouldn't I be doing that for you? A girl is supposed to be the one who makes lunch for a guy, right? No, no, Rena, no, it's not the 50s. Wow, looks like I stepped on quite a minefield here. Rena, uh, calm down, okay? Uh, right. She's blushing a little. I wonder what she was thinking. Oh, but I really wouldn't mind, you know, making lunch for you. I'd be really happy to. But I mean, only if you want me to. Rena trails off and stares at the floor awkwardly. She's not very good at hiding her feelings. She's a wonderful girl, but I only see her as a good friend. I don't want to hurt her feelings or our friendship, so I honestly don't know what to do. The worst part is, she knows I like Claire, so she tries hard not to say anything. Even if I picked up on her feelings anyway, it doesn't change the fact that she's bottling them up. Uh, never mind that. I, I don't know what came over me. <laughs> Watching her struggle like that, it's so painful. Rena, it's fine if I just start making lunch for you as well. I really don't mind. Right now, I'd say anything to make her feel better. Really? You do that for me? Her eyes are filled with sudden hope. Oh no, did I just promise too much? Was that considered accidentally leading her on? Of course. If I'm already making one lunch, it's not really much harder to make double. Thank you, Ryu. I'm sorry for the trouble. Don't worry about it. I can't help but notice you've been getting more forgetful lately, though. Are you getting enough sleep? It's nothing like that, you know me. Forgetful as a goldfish. But I have been meaning to ask you something. It seems like you always pack a pretty large lunch. Are you really that hungry? Well, yeah, I guess I am. To her, I guess it looks like I do eat a lot. But I'm a guy after all. We need more calories than ghost. <laughs> I just love the scripts of dating games and how there's just these random, completely weird asides in them. It's brilliant. Ryu, can I ask you something else? It's about this morning. Uh-oh. I didn't mean for her to hear any of that. I just wanted Claire to give me some peace. Now she's probably got the wrong idea. About what you said earlier. D did you really mean all that? I smile in what I hope is a sincere, but entirely friendly way. Rena, Of course I meant it. I wouldn't exaggerate about something so serious. You're a really strong person, and I know what you're like when you're focused. I'd hate to be the one standing in your way. Thanks, Ray. That means a lot to me. You see, I I figured you probably thought of me as clumsy and hopeless, so I thought I was considered really boring. I do my best to conceal a smile. I have to admit, Rena is awfully cute when she's shy and embarrassed. Why do you not think you're an interesting person? Well, I just don't think I stand out at all. Rena, you're a model student. You've got fantastic grades, a sweet personality, and you're really cute. Right, you just, just date Rena. Just date Rena. This is clearly the easier path. Popularity isn't the same thing. You and Claire are my only real friends. I'm really lucky to have Claire, and you. I feel like we share a bond, because we're both millennial orphans. Oh, blimey! Okay, um, so the Y2K mention earlier sounds like there was an apocalypse in the year 2000 in this universe. Excellent. Millennial orphans. Six years ago, the Y2K bug struck the country of Soriyama. For the rest of the world, the hysteria was exaggerated, but here, it wasn't exaggerated enough. We weren't prepared, and all the technology intrinsic to daily life failed at once. It was a complete disaster. Buses, planes, traffic lights, even the economy, everything fell apart, simply because our computers and devices could only use two digits to represent the year. The idea was absolutely ludicrous to anyone with even a passing computer knowledge, and to this day, tech experts the world over still can't explain how Y2K caused it, but the results were tragic, and crystal clear to everyone. Thousands of people died in the chaos, most of them working adults. The foster care system wasn't ready for the sudden influx of several thousand children, dubbed by the media as the Millennial Orphans. Rena and I were just two of those unfortunate souls. In the rush to places in foster care, the government essentially bribed people to take us in and glossed over most of the normal regulations. As a result, the households we found ourselves in were often miserable. I heard from the news that a lot of orphans ran away, or tried to, but I had a different plan of escape. You know, if it weren't for you and Claire, I don't know how I would have made it this far. I can't believe how lucky I am. It helps to have friends who understand what you're going through. You and Claire are really important to me too. I know I can always come to you guys when I need anything. If I hadn't met Claire and Rena when I did, I don't want to think about how I would have ended up. We're both incredibly lucky to have made wonderful friends we have, aren't we? If we put our minds to it, we can do anything. 
That's the great thing about Rena. She always sees the best in everything and everyone. Yep, and if you keep on believing in something, it's bound to happen. Maybe it's cheesy to say things like that, but the line between corniness and genuine sentiment is usually a matter of perspective. Ah, uh, that's right. I have to go and take care of a few things. Rena quickly crams the rest of my sandwich into her mouth. It makes her cheeks puff out adorably, like a squirrel's. Thanks again for lunch. Take care, Rena. I don't trust. I don't trust anyone in this game. Everyone's lying. Rena's probably a 40-year-old man from Sussex called Tim. Rena grabs her things and dashes out of the classroom. I open up my next box of sandwiches and dig in. What can I say? I'm still a growing guy. Hey, did you hear? Some guys are saying they saw those spooky shadows again. As I chow down on the rest of my lunch, I overhear some of the other students gossiping. You mean all those giant spiders and rat people? <laughs> Okay, sorry. I misread that as giant spiders and rat people. It's not. It's giant spiders and the rats that people are supposedly seeing. <laughs> yeah, these guys said they saw more of them in the forest yesterday. Lately, a bunch of occultists have been running around telling anyone who would listen there were shadow monsters in the forest. No one's really taking it seriously, of course, but I guess it's exciting to talk about. Still, more and more people are gossiping about it these days. I'm surprised it hasn't been replaced by a celebrity scandal or something yet. Do you think Mystica is really a magical girl? That new teen model on all the magazine covers these days? Yeah, I was talking to a guy downtown the other day. He said his brother, best friend, girlfriend saw her casting spells to fight off those monsters. A magical girl fighting shadows of spiders and rats? That's quite a delusion. Ha, no kidding. These people seriously believe it. If they saw something, it's got to be a publicity stunt. Or maybe they're getting paid to pretend it's real. I bet you're right. Ever since the rumours started, her popularity skyrocketed. I bet she's really raking it in now. Man, that'd be a pretty sweet gig. Teen superhero. Well, the attacker were eating it up anyway. Even those, even the guys are cosplaying her. It's hard to believe anyone takes Mystica seriously. Somehow, I can't imagine a real magical girl modelling for photos. I can't blame her for making a living, though. With such beautiful silver hair and a pretty face, it's only natural to take advantage of them. And if everyone thought she was a magical girl protecting the city, well, that'd be a major boost to her career, wouldn't it? Sigh. The things people will do for attention these days. Still, I suppose it makes people happy to envisage someone out there fighting for their sakes and it harms no one in pretending to be that someone. The clock on the wall informs me the time's almost up, so I immediately polish off the rest of my lunch. Now that school's out, I leave to meet up with my friend Alex. We plan to hang out at the arcade after school to- Oh, the arcade! Oh, there's a blast from the past. Excuse me, are you Ryu? Uh oh, uh oh, un uh oh, unnamed female student. That's me. And you are? My name's Sophia. I'm a journalist for the Crystal Stream News, and I'd like to talk to you for a bit. The Crystal Stream News? That's our school newspaper. You are one of the big three, and I have questions for you regarding them. The big three? I have no idea what she's talking about, but I guess I ought to hear her out. Okay. This isn't a good place to talk. Do you mind coming with me? Not really. Now I'm even more curious about what's up. Is there really such need for discretion? Alright, Sophia, what do you want to know? So then, what's your relation to the other members of the Big Three? Other members? I'm sorry, but I really don't know anything about this Big Three. I didn't even know I was a member until just now. Can you tell me a little about it? You're kidding, right? You're one of the Big Three and you've never even heard of them? I grin sheepishly and shrug my shoulders negatively. Nope, wanna fill me in? <sighs> You're supposed to be the one giving me information. The big three are the major achievers of College Stream Collegiate Institute. Claire, Rena, and you- I thought I was a slacker. I thought I was a slacker who was always late and couldn't be bothered going to school. How am I one of the big achievers? Claire and Rena? Oh, you mean because they're popular and attractive and at the top of the honour roll? But wait. So why am I in this group? I'm not any of those things. Yeah, okay, yep, yeah, I was right, that's what the intro said. True, you're probably only a member of my associate- Oh! Flipping flattering there, Sophia, thanks. Gee, she doesn't mince words, does she? I try to force a smile. My grades don't really matter that much to me, but I still manage a solid B average. That part doesn't bother me, but I don't like being thought of as a groupie. Claire and Rena are highly active in extracurricular activities, whereas you are not. Nor are you considered all that attractive by most- <laughs> Ooh, okay, just kick me while I'm down, why don't you, Sophia? You know what, with that fringe, you're not exactly top of the pops either. 
I take that back. Sophia doesn't mince words. She minces people with words. I can't hold back a laugh. For some reason, this situation is so sad that it's actually pretty funny. Is there more to this than I know? Ha, <laughs> no, not really. Bu said you had some questions for me, so you may as well ask them. I have work to do today, so I'll make this quick. What can you tell me about Rena and Claire? I haven't heard too much about them, aside from them being members of the Big Three. Why would it be called the Big Three if it's just the Big Two and their friend? It's... Ugh, it's weird. Well, I've been friends with them for ages now, but I don't think I should talk about them behind their backs. I don't need to write something bad about them. Ryu, we don't do smear pieces. As the official school newspaper, we have strict guidelines on what we can publish. Really? I guess I should read it more often. I'm only asking for a few leads on something, and I can promise you strict confidentiality. I won't quote you or in any way reveal your identity. Leads? On what? I can't tell you that. Oh, I don't trust this woman either. So, you want me to spill the beans on my two closest friends and you won't even tell me your angle. Why are you even interested in them? It's for... something very important. Right, because that's so convincing. Fine. I suppose it can't be helped. I'll let you in on a little... secret. And in return, you'll answer a couple of questions about Claire and Rena. A secret? What kind of secret? Have you heard of the Wings of Light? You mean the urban legend that you're probably about to specify for me anyway? The Wings of Light are a notorious group of heartthrobs who can supposedly charm any girl they like. In other words, they're total players. <laughs> oh dear. Rumour has it they've each dated over 30 girls in just 9 months. I don't know if any of it's true, but I really despise guys like that. Toying with a girl's affection for fun is just unforgivable. There's no telling how much heartache they've caused. While the rumours don't have all the facts straight, the Wings of Light did exist. You'd think everyone they dumped would hate them, right? But they're actually on very friendly terms with nearly all the girls they've dated. In fact, some of them have even formed a fan club. <laughs> oh, this game is wonderfully mad. A fan club? Right. Sophia ignores the scepticism dripping from my comment and moves along. At the end of last year, the group disbanded when a tragedy struck. One of the members disappeared after that, but I managed to track him down. I'll give you one guess which school he goes to now. Is it this one? Don't tell me. Crystal Stream. You got it. I'm willing to expose his identity. If you tell me more about Claire... Why would I care about the guy's identity? Why would I betray my best friend in order to find out who has some sort of weird power to date lots of women. I there's I gain nothing from knowing that information, but okay. That kind of thing doesn't interest me. No, you see? Spot on. It's completely irrelevant to me. Really now? Aren't you worried that you might set his sights on the heart of a gentle and innocent Claire? <gasps> ha! I burst out laughing. She really doesn't know anything about Claire at all. What's so funny? Claire wasn't gentle and innocent to the day she was born. I'll tell you this much about her. She's strong-willed, no-nonsense kind of girl. There's no way she'd fall for some smooth-talking playboy. Besides that, she's already dating someone. You think that guarantees anything? The Wings of Light are famous for breaking up relationships. Well, I'm gonna guess that Claire's current boyfriend actually already is the Wings of Light person, but never mind. There's one guy who even claimed to specialise in breaking up couples with difficult personalities. I shake my head, wiping away tears of mirth from my eye. Trust me, it'll never happen. Alright then. What if he was going for Rena? Actually, the thought of that does bother me. Rena would never consider the possibility of people having ulterior motives for even a minute. Still, it's not good enough reason to give Sophia carte blanche to pry into Rena and Claire's private lives. I'll admit, that makes me nervous, but that's still not good enough. Well, if you change your mind, you can find me here after school. I'm always on the lookout for new information. Do you have a business card? No. What? You don't have a business card? Why should I? I stand there wordlessly for a second. You wouldn't happen to be new to this whole journalism thing, would you? I don't know much about being a reporter. When you're doing social networking or getting leads on anything, you've got to have a business card. You'll find me just fine. Come back here when you're ready to talk. She walks away without giving me a chance to reply, much less bid her farewell. Well, you learn something every day, I guess. Apparently, I'm in a group called the Big Three. 
Maybe I should start paying more attention to the world around me. But why do people like labelling everyone anyway? I should probably look for Claire and Rena. I wonder if they've heard anything about this. As if summoned by that thought, Rena appears. Hi Ryu, I, I was looking for you. Hi Rena, where's Claire? Uh, she's busy with club stuff. Uh, should we go home now? Sure, let's go. So Ryu, what are your plans for the rest of the day? Well, I told Alex I'd spend time with him at the arcade today. Uh, Alex? Um, who's he again? Oh, right, the attacku. Uh, yeah. Oh, was that wrong of me to say? It's not that, it's just you made it sound like attacku was a synonym for otherworldly creature. They just enjoy different things, that's all. It's true that Alex is a little odd, but I really don't mind his antics. Most of the time. Ryu, are you becoming an attacku too? Well, this conversation is certainly taking a rather bizarre turn, but maybe Rina will get over her crush if she thinks I'm an attacku. I'm considering it. I mean, why not? I smile at her. I wonder if she'll buy it. Eh? Are you going to disappear from society, then not take showers anymore, and stay in your room all day? I think you have your wires crossed. People like that are called he he oh god um, hikikomori or shut-ins. It's a lot more common in Japan than over here in Soriyama. Oh? Phew, that's a relief. I won't have to scold you for not showering. <laughs> you have to think of people around you, you know. Ha. I sometimes wonder what Rena's thought processes are doing while we talk. She draws the strangest conclusions sometimes. Well, uh, this is where we part ways now. Don't forget we're meeting tomorrow at the Bubble Tea Shop. I won't. See you at Claire then. Take care, Rena. Bye. I wave my her uh, as she leaves. After she disappeared around the corner, I head back to my apartment to change out of my school uniform. Ah, <sighs> nothing like a place to call home. It really is, since I have the apartment to myself. Life in my foster home is miserable, so I secluded myself and spent all my time learning programming languages. As tech firms struggled to get back on their feet after the Y2K disaster, they were desperate to hire new programmers. Even though I was only 12 years old at the time, I managed to strike a deal with a new startup company. 2% of their increase in sales for the next 6 years will be mine in return for my services. When they started to make money, so did I. Now I'm on an exclusive contract with them for 4% of their sales increase. Apparently my work's good enough they want to keep me on. There's enough money in my savings account to get by for the next 3 years or so, but I should probably start looking for another contract soon. Because of the NDA I had to sign, I never told anyone about the source of my income. Not even Claire and Rena. It's probably better that way. I'm already being labelled enough as it is. No need to fuel that fire by making it public that I'm something of a computer genius. I finished changing and helped to meet Alex at the arcade. The arcade's nearby, so it's only a short walk to get there. According to Alex, this place is a local hub for gaming and tournaments. Speaking of which, where is he anyway? Hey Ryu, ready for a game? Hey Alex, let's not start with your favourite fighting game this time. How about a shooter? A shooter, huh? This is Alex. I met him at the very arcade about five months ago. Back then, I could beat anyone at any of the fighting games. I had a bit of a reputation. Then Alex came along, delivered a smackdown of embarrassing proportions in front of all the regulars. Once my pride recovered from the beating, I asked him for a rematch so I could learn to play better. He agreed, we've been friends ever since. Although we both go to Crystal Stream Collegiate Institute, I rarely see him there. We're in different classes, he spends his lunch break here at the arcade watching other people play. He eats lunch, observes the other players' matches, and then proceeds to beat them with a low tier character. Then he dashes back to school and makes it to class just in time. I've run with him a few times, but I'd much rather relax and talk to Claire Arena at lunchtime than run around so much. I know, they've got this new shooter game recently. Here, it's really good. Alright, let's try that one. 10 seconds. 10 seconds? I lost 3 lives in 10 seconds. Hey look, someone else is giving it a try. I turned to watch him play that awful game that never should have made it out of QA. But, that's impossible. Wave after wave of bullets fill nearly the entire screen, and yet the character never gets hit. There's even more of them than there were when I played the same stage. I look at the status screen. This time, it reads hard. Don't let it get you. This happens to everyone the first time they play a Dan... Dan Meku game. The trick is to turn your character's hitbox. It's a lot smaller than it looks. It makes you feel better? I'll buy you dinner after school on Monday. How about it? Well, never want to turn down free food? Count me in. Alright, it's decided. On Monday? You will finally experience the pleasures of a cosplay cafe. Oh, blimey. Cosplay cafe. Somehow I'm starting to regret agreeing so readily. Some prices are just too steep for a free meal. Don't worry, it's not what you're thinking. I'm a regular there. 
just a nice place to sit back and relax. Coming from a guy whose idea of a good time is watching pixelated girls all day, I'm not terribly convinced. Let's move on to a better game. You mean your beloved mystical magical stadium fighter? Mystical magical stadium fighter is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Two girls, magical powers, squaring off against each other in an arena. Alex tells me that it started as an indie title, was so popular it got licensed by a major publisher. I'm actually not too shabby at it, but Alex is seriously a pro. He's run thousands of dollars in prizes by competing in tournaments. Truth be told, I'd love to try making my own game someday, and seeing how far I can take it. Database is lucrative, but painfully boring and lacking in imagination. If it's okay with you, there's a new combo I want to try out. Fine, fine, we'll go to the fighting games. Yeah, alright. Alex and I spend a few more hours at the arcade playing, chatting and just goofing off. He and I part ways and I head home thinking about our promise to meet at the cosplay cafe on Monday. That should be an experience, if nothing else. Okay, I think we've met all the characters, so now we can actually start getting into things. I have unread mail. So, I really need some help with my work from Clear Sky Bank. Hi Digger, do you remember that guy from the IT department of Clear Sky Bank? It's me! Listen, there's just been so much work here and they aren't giving me the resources to do it. Not only that, the new contracts they hired did such a bad job that you'd have to do it all over again. You still have remote access to the service, right? Help me out and I'll make sure you're paid. You gotta help me out, man. I don't know what's gonna happen if I can't keep up with all this. Ryan. Okay. And thanks for helping us out, Charlie, at a game studio. Hello. Why is everyone calling me Digger? This is very weird. Thank you for your help with the project. We all feel very passionate about it and look forward to working together with you. We can't pay very well. We hope you're enjoying it on as much as we do. You've noticed a lot of things that could use improvement in your visit in our workplace. We appreciate the feedback. Hope you continue to support us. We look forward to any future contributions you may make. Charlie. Right. Interesting. Okay. So, what should I do today? It's Wednesday. Well, logically, I probably ought to go to school, but never mind. All right. Uh, use computer. Let's see. And I can either work, shop online, or don't use the computer. I don't assume I don't need to check email because I've already got the button there, so let's work. Let's do the Clear Sky Bank. We were asked to do that. So, oh, blimey, it's actually a bit more detailed. Um, so, okay, what do I have to do? I have to flipping uh, one of the largest banks. I used to do a lot of freelance work for them, but now they have their own IT systems in place. The new IT guy always seems frazzled, much like the old one. So I can either improve the database Okay, generally I help fix some queries. Optimization, reduce workload and mistakes in the company. Okay, or SEO, search engine optimization. Uh, improves the traffic flow to the company's website. It's useful for increasing the amount of customers. Um, okay, let's just database it up a little bit. Why not? So, level... Okay. So, I can actually do work, which is fascinating. Um, Alright, let's see what's... Let's see I can do work on my computer. What's on my bookshelf? Read a book, put books in put books in bag. It's a very weird thing to do. Alright, well let's go outside. What's happening outside? Let's go to the park. Let's go to the park in the evening. I can read, relax, or go to the forest from here. There have been reports of shadowy monsters in the forest. It's probably a prank. Could still be dangerous in there. Uh okay, so read or go somewhere else. Home, forest, stay here. Well yeah, of course I'm going to the forest. What's gonna I'm just going to immediately die in the forest. All right, forest, since it's the night time, the woods are undoubtedly crawling with predators. Oh. Uh, go into the forest. Yeah, sure, let's see. Let's, let's go into the forest. Various people claim to have seen monsters here. Most likely it's the product of a lone wolf and someone's wild imagination. Still, never hurts to be careful. If something weird happens, I can always run. I hope. And should I explore further? Yes, keep exploring. I walk around the forest for a while. Ooh, hello, female voice. So why did you venture all alone into the forest? I whip around in the direction of the sound, but I can't find the speaker. Who's there? Hmm, if I reveal myself, will you promise not to come to the forest anymore? Yes, I'll promise so because I want to find out who that is. All right, I promise I won't come to the forest anymore. Now, who are you? All right, then. From somewhere above, a girl drops to the ground before me. She looks like she got her lost on her way to an anime convention. I am the magical girl, Mystica. It is a pleasure to meet you. Well, whatever else she may be, she definitely looks the part. What's your name? Um, I'm Ryu. Nice to meet you too. Uh, so why are you here? 
There are shadow monsters roaming all through these woods. It is my duty to destroy them before they pose a threat to civilization. Speaking of which, it is time I resumed my search. Without waiting for my answer, she disappears into the brush. Take care, Ryan, and stay safe. If I need to contact you, you'll know I am truly the sender if the letter contains these words. May the light bring hope to all. Well, that was... <laughs> Wandered into the forest. Wandered into the forest, and then suddenly there was uh, suddenly there was a magical girl there. Excellent. Today was definitely more exhausting than I bargained for. Well, tomorrow I'll be having bubble tea with Claire and Rena. I wonder if I should tell them about our label as the Big Three. Surely they know. If they're super clever, that and one of them's and um, Claire's Claire's the popular one. She must know. She must know if that's what they're called. I might as well go to sleep now. Nothing else better to do. I turn out the lights and drift off. Ryu, I have something to show you. I'm having a dream from years ago about a much younger Claire and myself. She places something in my hand, careful to keep it concealed as she does. Then she moves her hand away and I peer downward curiously. Something slimy leaps up into my face and I yelp in surprise. Claire giggles helplessly at my reaction. Looks like Simon likes you. Claire! Her pet frog has now landed back on my hand and I glare at it reproachfully. Seeing her smirk, I feel a sudden urge to even the score. I hold the frog right up to her face. How do you like that? Her mouth just curls into a smile. Why, thank you, Ryu. I'm glad you returned my pet frog to me. She takes him from me and strokes him happily as she wiggles in her hand. Then she looks back to me, puzzled. You know, this is my frog. Why would you think that I would be scared of him? I stare back for a moment. I guess I didn't really think this through. There, there, Ryu. I'm sure you'll be able to get back at me someday. Claire pats me on the back consolingly. Behind the schoolyard, I can faintly hear the muffled sound of someone crying. As I walk around the corner in search of the source, I come across Claire sitting in the shadow of the school building. She's curled up against the wall, her face buried in her hands. Worried, I jog over to her. Claire, what's wrong? Simon, he... he died. She manages to say weakly between sobs. Who? You mean your frog? She nods, her face still hidden in her hands. We wait in silence for a moment before she speaks again. Well, go ahead, laugh at me. Oh, blimey, I wouldn't do that. Her words make my head snap up in surprise. What? Why would I do that? I made fun of you, Simon, didn't I? You should be happy he's gone. Claire. I kneel beside her and pat her on the head. I'm not going to laugh at you. What kind of friend does that? Claire looks up at me. Her eyes are red and swollen from crying. I wouldn't pick on you. I wouldn't laugh at you. I want to see you happy. When you cry, it makes me want to cry too. So please smile, Claire. Your smile makes me smile too. Without any warning, she tackles me and throws her arms tightly around me. The sheer force of it bowls me over, and we land on the grass in a tangled heap. But even so, she makes no move to stand and continues clinging to me desperately. This is the first time I've been so close to a girl. Ryu, she finally whispers in my ear. Even though I was so mean to you, you're being so nice to me. I don't deserve it. My only answer is to hold her tighter in my arms. As time passes, her shallow breathing levels to an even rhythm. Ryu, you can't stay like this forever. People as trusting as you will always get hurt in the end. I don't know what I'd do if someone hurts you. Okay, so possibly maybe we can maybe we can trust Claire. We've got quite a lot of history with Claire. I feel like probably Claire's a bit more trustworthy. Interesting. Okay. So it's Thursday, but it's also professional development day for teachers. School for teachers, not for us, so I can afford to sleep a little longer. I close my eyes and doze off again as I think about the irony of it all. I wake up just in time to get ready to meet Claire and Rena at the Buffle Tea Shop. I lock the door, head out. I arrive at the shop on time. Now where are they? Hey, looks like you made it on time for once. Hey Ryu, uh, we're over here. I join up with my two closest friends. They're both in high spirits by the looks of things. Hi Claire, hi Rena. Let's hurry up and order. I want a strawberry milky bubble tea with tapioca pearls. I want a banana milky bubble tea with strawberry jelly. Hey, don't tell me. Tell the woman at the cash register. We order our drinks and claim a booth for ourselves. <sighs> Nothing beats bubble tea with friends. Yes, it tastes much better when you're with people you love. But Ryu, you need to order something besides taro with tapioca pearls all the time. Bloody hell. Um... I, I, I've never had bubble tea. I've no idea if I'm getting all of these words wrong. Hmm, maybe. 
it's good to try out new things. You know what they say, variety is the spice of life. The girls look at me expectantly, as if the natural thing to do is to rush to the counter and change my order. Hmm, maybe. Right, you can't just say maybe all the time. You have to be decisive and take action like a man. I start grinning. Huh, maybe. You'll never get a girlfriend at this rate. Ha, I like to relax and enjoy things as they come. I take action as the situation demands it. In other words, you're just lazy. Hmm, maybe. I save her my jabs against Claire. I suppose it's because she gets a kick out of tormenting me that I enjoy messing with her too. By now, it's practically second nature. Ryu! This kind of reminds me of a Shakespearean play. There were lazy people in Shakespearean plays? Probably, but that's not what I meant. I can't remember the name of it though. Do you mean Romeo and Juliet? No, 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 no. That one was much too sad in the end. But I really like the idea of being so deeply in love with someone. I hope I can give my whole heart to someone who loves me someday. Rena is such a diehard romantic. It's pretty cute when she dreams about things like finding true love. Well, Rena, you're so pure hearted. Say, Ryu, why don't you go ahead and strip that innocence? Oh, blood! Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Back, back up, back up the conversation truck. You want to rethink that phrasing, Claire? <laughs> Just... Claire say that points at Rena. Hey, strip away your innocence. Go on. Bloody hell. Um. <coughs> oh, wow. Um, yes. Knock it off indeed. It's one thing for her to give me grief, but I hate it when she drags Rena into it. What are you trying to say, Claire? Oh, come on, Ryu. Just take her in your arms and show her the depths of your passion. Don't you want to be the one who captures Rena's angelic heart? Don't, don't say things like that, Claire. By some small measure of divine grace, I can see out of the corner of my eye that our drinks are ready. Ah, look. Our drinks are here. Yes, let's enjoy them before they get warm. Rena chimes in quickly, clearly as desperate as I am to change the subject. Thankfully, Claire doesn't push things any further. Three of us sip our bubble tea in silence for a few minutes. What actually is bubble tea? I've never had this drink. Is this more common in America? Because I, I don't think I've even ever like seen this on offer anywhere in Britain. I cannot remember ever seeing it. I don't know if this is just a Far East thing, but uh, I don't know. I don't know whether this can be found in America at all or either. Oh, you know, I heard that we're a group called the Big Three. Do you guys know anything about it? Huh, I've heard that before, but I don't think it really means anything. Hmm, not quite ready to be famous yet. It's just what a bunch of people call us, right? So it's like a nickname. Yeah, it's because we're famous for having such high grades. Huh, so it's just because we have high grades and hang out with each other? Rina seems so clueless and innocent about all this. She probably doesn't even realise she's the reason we have good grades, much less that her cuteness has anything to do with it. It's only thanks to you that we do so well in school, Rina. Yeah, you're the one who tutors us after all. You guys, you're both really smart. I didn't do all that much. Despite my computer skills, I'm lousy at most other subjects. It's only thanks to Rena and her patient explanations that I have anything resembling good grades. Of course you did. You did all that studying with us, and you encouraged us to enter all those competitions too. What was that first one we were in together again? Uh, it was that art contest, remember? The one where we all had to draw the same thing three different times using different media. You did painting, and Rena did sketching. And you were lazy and did yours on a computer. Hey, it's not as easy as it looks. I put a decent amount of work into that thing. That was so much fun. I remember that Claire kept pestering Ryu instead of working on her painting. Hey, I just wanted to make sure he was doing his part. I didn't know him as well back then, remember? Well, you know me pretty well back now, so why'd you still bug me all the time? The three of us joke and reminisce as we finish our drinks. Oh, shoot, I have something to do at home. Sorry guys, I have to go ahead. You two lovebirds have fun without me, okay? Her angelic smile suddenly turns positively devilish when she looks at me. Now remember, Ryu, Rena is very delicate. Go I sometimes wonder if the script of this game is intentionally designed to be slightly suspect. Um, I don't know. Don't be too repugnant. I feel just slightly wrong. I feel wrong just reading this out. Don't be too rough with her. See ya. Ah, Claire. Man, can't you give it a rest for once? She's gone. Well, Claire will be Claire. Don't let it bother you. But that's what makes her such a wonderful person. She'd be more wonderful if she stopped giving her such a hard time, though. Ryu.
Is... Is that really such a bad thing? Uh, us going out, I mean? Rena, Is she finally going to confess to me? Ryu? What do you think of me? I... I, I like you a lot. I'm sorry, but I just can't hide it anymore. I know you liked Claire, but she has a boyfriend now, so I wish I could be the one to make you happy. I really want to be with you. Rena. Is it because I, I'm so clumsy? Or because I'm not cute enough? Rena, you know it's nothing like that. My heart's beating a little fast now. For a long time, I took it for granted that my feelings for Claire were the same. But was that really the case? Was it just stubbornness on my part that I continued loudly insisting to Claire that Rena was nothing but a good friend? Have I been in denial this whole time? If it's not that, then... Will you go out with me, Ryu? You see, I'm kind of tempted to say yes, actually. Because Rena's clearly into me way more than Claire's. Claire strikes me as a very good friend. She strikes me as kind of clearly a very good friend. It's kind of got, we've got a kind of very good jokely platonic relationship. She's dating someone else. She doesn't seem to have any interest in me. Whereas Rena is, you know, me and her clearly have an awful lot in common. She's admirable in a whole number of ways. I, I think my character finds her physically attractive because he did mention that she was very cute. So. I actually think yes. I think this is I think this is the right thing to do. I think yes, I am going to go out with Rena. Yes. I'd love to go out with you, Rena. Ryu, thank you. I'm I'm so happy. She leaps at me, and suddenly there's an unbelievably cute girl right next to my face, her arms thrown tightly around me. But I don't even have time to think as she quickly steps back, embarrassed. Sorry about that. I I just got excited. Ha! So am I. There's no need to apologise. My mind is whirling at all these sudden developments, especially the last one. Rena and I have hugged as friends before, but for the first time I'm conscious of just how warm and beautiful she really is. So, are you free tomorrow afternoon? Maybe we could go on a date? That sounds great. How about the park? Alright, let, let's meet at the park. I have to get going now, but... I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, Ryu. Bye, Rena. Rena heads for her house, practically skipping with joy. I'm pretty overcome myself. Wow. So Rena and I are a couple now. It's the last thing I expected to happen when I agreed to come today. And now we have a date planned. All this time, I guess I was hiding behind what I thought were feelings for Claire to avoid realising my true feelings for Rena. Maybe if Claire didn't give us such a hard time, I would have realised it sooner. My head swimming with thoughts of Rena and tomorrow, I head home. Alright, let's see what some of the other activities are. So, what, what's in status over here? So, I've got a stress level and a personal... Personal strength level? Okay, interesting. So, I don't know what personal strength really means. I don't know if that is actually something to do with... If that's like stamina? And I've also got stress, so I can't let my stress get too high, presumably. So, I know I can use my computer to work, or I can check my email. So, I already, obviously, I know I can already check my email because there's that. I could rest, which I assume gets my stress down, or I could go outside. Let's check the bookshelf. I haven't checked the bookshelf yet. So, let's read a book. What do I have to read? Ooh, Little Disruptor or Weightlifting for Idiots. Weightlifting for Idiots. I start reading about basic weight training. And I learned how to select equipment. Basic resistance training number one. Okay, looks like I need to buy some equipment before I can train. Right, so uh, apparently, yes, that's probably my personal strength stat. So my personal strength stat hasn't gone up, but I'm guessing it, it will do. So I have basic resistance training number one. And let's finally just go outside and see where else we could go. There's the park. And I could read in the park. It's not bright enough to read here. I'll need to purchase some sort of reading light. Okay, fine. All right, well, let's go home then. I did promise I would not go to the forest anymore, so that's fine. Or I can use my computer to shop online. Right, money. So, don't buy anything. Math. Just random manga. General items. Weightlift. Oh, blimey. Heck. Um, so, it's going to cost me... If I want to, yeah, do dumb... Yeah, if I want to do training... And I'm assuming that's going to get my personal strength up. I need to save up $300. So I'm guessing I need to work in order to do that. So large backpack, medium backpack. 
and then double as Oh, okay. Oh, a bookmark light. Okay, well, I'm going to buy that. Yes, you'll receive it in three days, so then I'll be able to read in the park. But I can't afford anything else right now. And I can put books in bag. I don't know what that does. What does that do? Right, okay. Oh, is that a book I need to take with me to the park if I want to take it? Okay, I think I see. Well, may as well do some work before uh, before I actually go home. And then, haha, -ha, social media. Uh, sure, let's get that SEO up, given social media sites kind of depend on attracting new traffic. Boom. My stress has gone up, but I've started uh, working on them too. And I'm guessing... Ah, okay, so it's the end of the day, but now I actually get some income. So I've gotten $100 overall. So, ah, okay, I get $40 from each of those guys. I guess this is because it's the end of the week. Is this an end of the week thing? So as I, as, as I do each bit of work on them, I get an extra $20 into my bank account. Oh, I get paid every two weeks from my contracts. They'll pay even better depending on how well my client company does. If I want to make more money, I can work for them using my computer. I have enough money to live on for now, so I only have to work if I want more spending money. My paychecks get deposited directly into my bank account, which is set up automatically to pay the bills each month. Anything left over after that, mine to spend however I want. All right, okay. Let's go on my first date with Rena to finish off this part of Fading Hearts, I think. So even though we spent so much time together before, I'm actually kind of nervous. I take a quick shower, get changed, and put on some deodorant. Well, that, that's a great thing to do before a date. Put on deodorant. Pro dating tip from many a true nerd. All right, it's time to meet Rena at the park. I grab my keys, lock the door, and head out. The walk to the park is pleasant. The temperature's just right, and several fluffy white clouds dot the azure sky. The morning forecast has been warning about an approaching storm, but so far there's no sign of it. The weather's perfect for a date. When I arrive, the park is mostly empty. I can only see a few kids playing here and there. Uh, Ryu, hi! Hi, Rena. Rena's so happy right now. It looks like she might float away from sheer bliss. Let's walk by the river. She takes my hand and leads me to the walkway by the riverside. Her hand feels warm and silky soft. I can feel it trembling with excitement. Or is that mine? You know... I've wanted to do this with you for such a long time. Really? For how long? She smiles at me. That's a secret. I'll never tell you. Aw, oh, why not? Rena only laughs. I think a little mystery is romantic. Really? And why is that? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe because not knowing makes your heart beat faster. Her grip on my hand tightens. Say, Ryu? If I ever feel like I can't make it anymore, can I lean on you for support? Oh, is there some sort of secret here I wasn't aware of? She looks at me pleadingly with her deep eyes. Will you promise that? If I can't go on, will you help me get back on my feet no matter what? Yeah, okay. I'm a friend and her boyfriend. I think that's a fair thing to promise. Of course. I mean, this this date got pretty deep pretty fast. But yeah, I, we can run with that. Of course, Rena. I always want to be here for you. You have such a pure and honest smile. I don't ever want to see you stop smiling. Thank you, Ryu. I believe that if something really awful happens, it can still lead to something good. We're both orphans from the same disaster, but because of it, I think our hearts are connected, since we felt the same sadness. We already share a past together. I hope that we can share a future together too. Rena's words are genuine ones from the bottom of her heart, and hearing them makes my heart swell with feelings for her. No matter what happens, I feel like I want to protect her forever. I'm increasingly aware of the fact the game told me to trust no one. <laughs> Rena's just a little bit too cute and earnest and innocent for her own good. She's probably a she's probably a tax accountant called Kevin. You probably already know this, but this river is one of the three tributaries of the Sagur Sagaraqua running through Trident City. This particular branch has a legend about it though. It's called the Umemi River because it has the power to change dreams into reality. If your heart is shining as brightly as the sun reflected on the Umemi River, then your dream will come true. Uh, at least that's how the story goes. You really are a romantic person. Did you want to come here because of that? I don't really have to say it, do I? Though it's not like I really believe in superstitions. Rena grabs my arm and pulls me close. I'm still happy my dream came true, though. I smile back at her and wrap my other arm around her small body. The scent of her shampoo fills my nostrils. It's understated, but clear and sweet, just like Rena herself. 
Then why don't you thank the river for making your dream come true? Rina slowly releases my arm and takes a step back. I'm sorry, Ryu, but I just remembered something I have to go do right now. But I, I had a really wonderful time with you today. I'm so glad you came. Rina, is something the matter? You can tell me about it if you're having any kind of problem. I'm stunned by the fact she's cutting our date short all of a sudden. Whatever it is, it must be something serious. Oh, no, no, no. It's nothing like that at all. And now she's panicking again. She gets worked up over such little things. It's all right, Rena. I believe you. Thank you, Ryu. Rena dashes off before I can even say she's welcome. I don't know what she needs to do suddenly, but I'm sure she has good reason for it. As I make my way home, I savour the feeling of the warmth of her body in my arms. Huh. Guess the forecast nailed it this time. It's storming pretty badly right now. So, terrible thunderstorm residents should stay indoors. Wow, the situation is worse than I expected. No wonder the weather won't stop talking about it. At least the weather was perfect earlier in the day when Rena and I had our first date. Being with her was incredible. I can't believe how happy I am now. I'm still a little concerned by the fact she suddenly ran off. Hey, Claire was mysteriously running off on a couple of occasions too. I feel like both of them have secrets. But I'm sure she'll tell me about it next time I see her. Oh well. Nothing says Sunday night like surfing the net, playing video games. Until the power goes out anyway. Oop, doorbell. Uh, lots of doorbells. Someone's ringing the doorbell frantically. Who on earth would venture out in this miserable weather? I dash over to the door and fling it open. Ryu, it's terrible. Rena is on my doorstep, utterly drenched from head to toe. But the look on her face is such I can't tell if it's raindrops or tears coursing their way down her face. Rena, uh, are you out of your mind? You're going to catch a death of cold. That's, that's not important right now. It's Claire. Claire's boyfriend is... Claire's boyfriend? What? Was there an accident? If so, then Claire, she must be devastated right now. Rena, calm down. T tell me what happened. Claire's boyfriend. He... he... She stops to catch her breath, but it seems like she's getting more agitated rather than calmer. Claire's boyfriend, he's... He's abusing her. Okay, this light-hearted teenage dating game got very heavy very quickly. And so the abuse subplot begins. I freeze for a moment, wondering if this is some sort of mad joke. Certain she can't mean abusing like actually hitting her. What are you talking about? Claire would never date a guy like that. She's not a pushover. Yes, but he's one of the wings of light guy, obviously. You don't understand. She's different around you. When it's just other people, she's no one near as assertive. I can't believe this. Oh, flashback, Sophia. Really now, aren't you worried that he might set his eyes on the heart of the gentle innocent? Claire? Rai, you have to believe me. He was calling her all sorts of names and he even shoved her. She just stood there crying and didn't do anything. I don't know what to say. I don't know if I can believe it. I don't know if I want to believe it. The pounding of the rain suddenly seems so distant in my ears as if I'm in another world right now. I tried to confront her about it, but she won't listen to me. She thinks I'm too naive. You have to help me. We have to save Claire from her boyfriend. I can't do this alone. Rena, are you positive that's what's happened? How did you find out about it? I saw them. You saw them? Where? That's not important right now. Ryu, you have to promise- Oh, it is important. That's totally important. You're hiding something. Ryu, you have to promise me you'll do something. She wouldn't listen to me, but I know you can do it. So please, forget about going out with me. Whoa, whoa, hang on, these two things aren't mutually exclusive. Right now, you need to get Claire away from that awful guy. Do whatever it takes to save her. Even if that means getting her to go out with you instead. Today made me so happy. It was like a dream. But I can't be happy with you when Claire is in so much pain. So forget about being with me and save her. You used to like her, so I know it'll work out. I'll be fine. You don't have to worry. I'd better get back now before the storm gets any worse. Take care, Ryu. Before I can stop her, she slips out of the door into the torrential downpour. Rena, wait! Yes, go after her. Go after her. We're going after her. I sprint after her, yelling her name at the top of my lungs, but she's already disappeared. That idiot. She never worries about herself. She's going to catch a cold for sure now. Rena, you need to come back and dry off and warm up. Rena! Rena! Idiot. You need to think about yourself sometimes. 
I search for her frantically in the pounding rain, but it finally dawns on me that it's hopeless. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang, wait. What's PS? Wait, oh, personal, oh, I went out into the rain. I've actually impacted my health. My strength has fallen down and my, and my stress has gone up. Oh dear. Rina, why did you run off like that? I peel off my soaking shirt and pants, towel off half-heartedly and throw on the first dry clothes I lay hands on. I fall into bed, exhausted. Could Claire really let herself be abused like that? And Rena, she's trying to be strong, but it looks like it's killing her. I stare up at the ceiling, wondering what I should do now, but I fall asleep without finding any answers. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on this incredibly sad end note at the moment, I think I'm going to call it a part here. But I'm told this is a short game, so expect, uh, I'm hopefully should be able to finish off pretty quickly and expect another part of this pretty soon. I don't know exactly when, but very soon, very soon indeed. Uh, so there we are. Dating sim I love dating simulators. I love how they're just utterly bananas and stuff just happens at random and big, random, huge emotions, often not desperately well written, just get thrown at you in rapid succession. It's brilliant. I just love them. They're so good fun. And they're so easy for me to make too. They're, they're a lovely thing for me to make. I've actually done uh, quite a few of these before. Uh, a lot of people obviously are fairly new to the channel, um, joined since last November. Just so you know, I've done several of these before. In fact, um, the one that I've done most work on is Nicole Male Romancers Active. That is a game where you play a college girl who has to pick from four boyfriends, except one of them is actually a serial uh, kidnapper and murderer, and you don't know which one it is, so you have to solve the mystery at the same time as dating some hunky boys. Uh, that I have done a few parts of, and uh, rather, I'm going to use the opportunity to announce this, that's coming back! That's right, that is coming back. Uh, at some point over the next week, Nicole will be back. If you want to get yourself up to speed on Nicole, a uh, full playlist for all the parts I've done so far, it will just uh, click the annotation on screen right now to take you to that. Uh, but I'll link the playlist in the description below as well. And I've also done a single complete run through her tofu boyfriend, or for those of you who are not familiar with the game, the Pigeon Dating Simulator. So you can also go through the first part of that through clicking the annotation on screen at the moment too. But yes, there we are. That's uh, that's my 40,000 subscriber special. I, I was hoping I might actually be able to do this whole game in a single sitting, but uh, it's a little bit longer than uh, I thought it might be. So never mind, we will split this into another part. But uh, 40,000 subscribers, and by the time this uh, actually goes up, it'll be pretty darn close to 42,000. Might be just past 42,000. So that's amazing, this past week. And obviously, we had the 35,000 milestone just last week. So amazing, amazing this last week. Great few months for us. Absolutely amazing. But thank you, thank you all so, so much. I, I, I love doing this. I love doing this channel. I've been doing it for coming up on two years now, and it's just a wonderful thing to do. So thank you all so, so much. And there will be another part of this very, very soon, and some Nicole and her tofu boyfriend, if you've been enjoying this utter, utter madness, to keep you going in the meantime. But yes, there we are. I've been John. This has been Many a True Nerd, and this has been Fading Hearts. Thank you so, so much, and goodbye. Haha, <laughs> I'm ingenious at time. Oh, oh, okay, this escalated quickly. I'd, I'd like to fly your drone. So good about a butterfly in a bucket. What does that tell you about the human condition? Are we the butterfly and is capitalism the bucket? What happens if you go right to the back in time? The very beginning of time. Oh, you literally just burn the universe.